Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. I just wanted to put this video up real quick. I used to play quite a bit of backgammon, and one of the most daunting tasks in backgammon is to do what's called a pip count. About 15 years ago, I developed this thing called the Northern Michigan Pip Count. It's a variation of the Zaire half crossover method, and it's very workable across the table, so I thought I'd share it with you. Now, before I do that, let's go ahead and get a really good review of the Zaire half crossover method. Now, just to remind everybody what a pip count is, that is the number of rolls that you have to do to move all of your checkers off the board. In the starting position, you have to roll 167 points. Now, in the half crossover method, you divide the board into eight half crossovers, and we'll assign them a value from minus one to six. We'll go over that in a little more detail later. Now, the Zare method uses some mathematical tricks. Now, the four, five, and six position is part of the second half crossover to home. Now, if we stack all 15 checkers up on the five position, we know that we have to roll 15 times 5 or 75 to take them all off. Now here's the first trick. If we put 5 on the 4, 5, and 6 position, or indeed any symmetrical pattern about that 5 position, we also have 75 to get off. So here's the important point. We look at all the checkers in each half crossover, and then we observe how they are arranged about the midpoint of that crossover. Now that we understand that, let's see how to use it. So let's see how we can modify that original position a little. So we take that checker that was on the number 5 position and move it over to the middle of the next half crossover, the number 8. So originally in our home position, we had 75 pips because all the checkers were symmetrical about the 5 point. But we move that one checker over 3 to the next half crossover. Notice that 8 point is the middle of that next half crossover. Now our pip count is 78. So our working pip count is 75 plus 3 times the number of half crossovers from our home position. So we have 14 in home and then we have one that's half a crossover away. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 75 is 78. Now this is an important concept, so I want to go over it one more time. Our home position is the 4, 5, and 6. 7, 8, and 9 is one half crossover. 10, 11, and 12 is two half crossovers. And 22, 23, and 24 are six half crossovers. Let's see why those numbers are important. Let's move that one checker over to the 14 point. Now recall that our rough pip count formula was 75 plus 3 times the number of half crossovers. So when we had one half crossover, it was 75 plus 3 times 1 is 78. Now we have one checker times 3 times 3 half crossovers. So our pip count is now 75 plus 9, or 84. Now what happens if we move some more checkers over? Here we have three checkers times three crossovers times three. So, 27. So we have 27 plus 75 or 102. Now let's continue to build on that and look at the starting board and see if we can get a full pip count. Okay, so let's look at each group individually. In the home position, the four, five, and six, we have five checkers and we count those as zero half crossovers. Next, we have three checkers in the one half crossover position. We have five in the three half crossover position, and we have two in the six half crossover position. So the first thing that we do is we figure out how many half crossovers we're dealing with. Two checkers in the six is 12. Five checkers in the three is 15 for 27. And then three checkers in the one half crossover position for another three. Our total is 30. Now remember, our formula is 3 times the half crossovers, or 3 times 30 is 90, plus 75 is 165. That's really very easy, and you can do that over the board with a little practice. So we know that our starting position is 167. So what about the other two? Now the key to that is to look at the midpoint of each half crossover section. Let's start off in the one half crossover section on that eight point there. We've marked the midpoint of each half crossover section with the arrows, and as you see, that eight point and those three checkers 
is right on the midpoint. Now let's go back to the home section. You see those five checkers on the six point? Now normally we'd have to add five extra points because those five checkers are one point past the midpoint. However, if we look up at the three half crossover section, we see that we've got five checkers on the 13. All five of those checkers are one point closer than the midpoint, so they balance out the ones that are on the six. That just leaves our two checkers up on the 24 point. Now that's one point past the midpoint of that section at the 23, so we have to add two to our 165, giving us our exact number of 167. So our formula becomes three times the number of half crossovers plus 75, and then we add the correction for how the checkers are situated about the midpoint. So let's get some reference positions in. 25 half crossovers is 150 pips. 15 is 120 and 5 is 90. In a straight race you can double if your pip count is 8% ahead of your opponent and you can take if you're within 12%. Now if you have 24 half crossovers and divide that by 4 you get 6. Add 6 to it and that means that your 8% is 12 pips. 12% 12 will be 1.5 times that or 18 pips. Let's use some of those references to figure out pip counts. 17 is 15 plus 2, and 15 is 120 plus 2 would be 126. Now each man you have on the bar counts as 7 half crossovers, and each man you take off the board reduces the 75 by 5. Now let's have a look at a real position here. Let's see if we can count up the number of half crossovers on each side. Now red has 9 in the home position. It has two checkers in the one half crossover position for two. It has two more in the two half crossover position for four more, that's six. And then it has two in the three half crossover position for another six, so 12. Going through white, we have checkers in the home position. Then we have two in the one crossover position for two. Two in the two half crossover position, so that would be four more for six, and then three in the three half crossover position for another nine, so that's a total of 15. So now we have 12 half crossovers to 15 half crossovers. So remembering our reference positions, 15 half crossovers is 120 pips. Since 12 is three less than 15, and each half crossover counts as three pips, we have 120 minus 9, or 111. So our rough pip count is 111 to 120. But going back to red, we see all nine checkers in the home position are symmetrical about the midpoint of the home. The two checkers on the 8 are at the midpoint of that half crossover. Same thing with the 11. Now if we look up at the 13 point, we see that those two checkers are one point closer than the midpoint, so we have to take two points off our total, and now our pip count is 109. Now if you look at white, see if you can figure out why the pip count is 123. That's right, if we look at white's home position, we see that we have to add four. Now if we look at the one half crossover, we have to add another two. The two crossover is right on the midpoint of that section. And at the three half crossover point, we have to deduct three because those three checkers are one point closer than the midpoint of that section. That's a net gain of three to our 120 for 123. So the pip count is 123 to 109. Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief explanation of the Zaire half crossover pip count method. It's very simple to use and it's very uh, quick over the board. Now as alluded to earlier in the video, I personally developed something called the Northern Michigan Pip Count, which is a variation of this, but it's much faster. And uh, it's very handy for deciding doubling situations. The Zare method is the basis of that Northern Michigan Pip Count, and then I add a couple of little tricks to it that are very easy to understand and see. If there's some demand for that, leave a comment and I'll go ahead and put it up at a later date.